All right, we're going to get started here as people finish uh, finding their seats. Uh, my name is Josh Wynn. I'm the program coordinator for Buckeye Wellness here at Ohio State. I want to thank you all for coming today. Uh, we have a packed house, as you can tell. Uh, a couple things before we get started. Uh, we have some of uh, events here in the next couple months. Next week is our annual State of Health and Wellness, uh, where you hear all the exciting things that are going on uh, the past year or so. Uh, regarding, state of, or regarding health and wellness here at Ohio State. Uh, spots are limited and they are quickly filling up. So if you are interested in attending, it's a free lunch, another opportunity. Uh, go to go.osu.edu slash, slash, slash state wellness 2019. We also have our ROTC wellness boot camp in the SHU on April, April 24th. Uh, it is for all fitness levels and for the community here in Central Ohio. So if you are interested, uh, you can visit go.osu.edu slash wellness boot camp. And then our last event that's coming up in May is the Amazing Race to Wellness based off the TV show. Uh, so that is on May 15th over at Lincoln Tower Fields. So you, if you are interested in that, getting a team for that, uh, you can go to go.osu.edu slash amazing race 2019. On, all that information is in your guys' packet as well. Um, if you have not done your biometric screen, there are some slots still available outside. So if you are interested in that or need to get that done, uh, please see Dixie out in the uh, out there. Uh, we'll have about 10 to 15 minutes towards the end of the presentation for Q and A. So if you have any questions, just hold them there. If you're tuning into the live webcast, uh, please email me winn.50 at osu.edu, and I will ask your question for you. Uh, today's presentation is titled "Snacking for Sustainability." Our presenter is registered dietitian Chris Dilley from the Comprehensive Weight Management Program here at Ohio State. Christine enjoys sharing innovative nutrition ideas with her patients to help them improve their overall nutrition status and their daily relationships with food. So please give me a welcome round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Happy Friday. Yay, Friday. <laughs> And thank you all for being willing to share your lunch hour with me instead of watching March Madness games. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so today we're going to talk about snacking for sustainability. And um, part of understanding what that means is kind of defining what is a snack, right? Um, this can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, some people would maybe define that by the time of day that we would eat the snack, um, what type of food we might be consuming, um, the amount of food, you know, a snack versus a meal, what that kind of looks like, um, and how or where. You know, a lot of us eat on the go, right? So we would consider those to be snacks. We might be walking and talking and carrying it with us. Um, or, you know, how long it takes us to actually consume it. So you can see there's lots of different ways that we look at, like, what is a snack, okay? And it probably looks different for each and every one of us. Um, so why does that matter? Um, how we define it. Basically, you know, it allows us to help determine whether snacking or having a snack is actually a beneficial thing for us. Um, in a lot of the literature, when you look and see, you know, you're looking at studies, and I'm sure you guys know there's something different out every day, right, <laughs> as far as results go. Um, how we see if something is beneficial or not is based a lot on how it's defined in these studies, and that's really inconsistent. A lot of it's based on self-reporting. So unfortunately, that leaves us to some confusion in guidance as far as whether we should be snacking or not snacking. Um, what we do know is that snacking has, is and has been on the rise for quite a while now based on the data. Um, so when we're looking at the statistics, approximately two-thirds of U.S. adults consume two or more snacks a day. Um, and the percentage of people who are getting a whole lot of their calories, 50% or more, is rising. And overall, most of us get about 20 to 25 percent of our daily calories from snacks. So what does all of that mean or why is that important? Um, because that volume of snacking represents a significant opportunity in our diet, in our daily diet, as far as potentially enhancing what we're eating or degrading our diet overall as far as the nutritional quality. 
So um, some of the common choices we see for snacks. Um, these are the types of things that we might grab via the vending machine <laughs> or the break room or other options that are available um, is that they tend to be what people might consider to be a fun food um, or a treat, things that are high in calories, maybe pretty low in nutrients, um, you know, chips, cookies, things like that. A lot, a lot of us kind of define snacks as those types of foods. Um, but these types of things tend to be high in the nutrients that we're kind of not looking to add to our diet, like sugar and salt and fat, and maybe lacking in some of the things that we would want to add. So today we're going to kind of talk about redefining that, redefining these choices that are commonly picked and then using snacking as a tool to help us improve our diet overall. So what are the values of redefining these snack choices? Um, the first one is that it can help us meet our nutritional needs on a daily basis. Okay? And a healthy snack can provide us with um, opportunity for adding in those nutrients that we're missing, um, potentially some anti-inflammatory foods um, into our diet that we may not have at mealtime especially if we share meals with other people in a household and a lot of these healthier choices may not be well accepted. Anybody have kids or, <laughs> um, or even partners or spouses that just don't like those kinds of foods? Um, so in that case, a snack would be an opportunity to work it back in. Um, and it can help us meet our recommendations for fruits, vegetables, fiber um, on a daily basis. Um, how many have seen this recommendation, the five to nine servings a day of fruits and vegetables? Well, according to the statistics, we're not doing very well with this, as you can see. <laughs> Basically, on average, only about 10% of U.S. adults are getting the recommended amounts of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. So what does that mean? We have a lot of room for improvement, right? <laughs> a lot of opportunity to add those things in. Um, the second thing that a healthy snack can do is help regulate our hunger throughout the day. So this is a pretty common eating pattern that I see when I work with patients. Um, and I know we all work in healthcare, right? So we tend to have kind of crazy, hectic schedules. Um, you know, whether you're in the office environment or in direct patient care, a lot of times our days can kind of get away from us. So we wake up, we're running late, we run out the door, maybe we don't get breakfast or just grab something quick and easy. Lunch, if we're lucky, we have a good choice in like these beautiful lunches we have today in the cafeteria, but a lot of times it's maybe just grabbing something quick or out of a vending machine, a large dinner, and then we're snacking all night. How many people in here think this kind of like, kind of resembles what they do a little bit? Yeah, okay. So, when we eat like this, what happens? Um, these really inconsistent meals set us up for our appetite kind of getting out of control over the course of the day. And it may kind of go up and down throughout our day. And as we're, we're not eating to fill that hunger need, our energy levels can go up and down too. So how do we get off of that roller coaster? Because our goal is to stabilize our hunger throughout the day and promote sustained energy throughout the day. So one way to approach that is a consistent meal pattern. Instead of the kind of the chaotic kind of grab and go thing that we saw in the last slide, what we might want to focus on is consistency in our meals. And so this would include, you know, the typical breakfast, lunch and dinner meals, but also healthful snacks in between those meals with the goal of not going more than about four hours without eating. Um, we focus on this amount because that's kind of about when most people would start to get a little bit hungry. And when we follow this kind of pattern, it allows us to have more of our calories spread evenly throughout the day, kind of front loading our day a little bit, um, so that by the end of the day, we're not in that state of craving that the previous diet pattern might leave us in. Does anybody like get to evening time and they just can't quit snacking? They're just grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. 
Um, and if we're hungry all day long, it just feels like sometimes we can't ever get full. So we just keep snacking. If we follow a pattern more like this, it sets us up to be more comfortable throughout the day. Okay. So another tool that we can use is time. Because everyone's schedule is different, right? Um, do we have people who work? I mean, most of you probably work day shift since you're here. But I'm guessing, you know, certainly in a hospital environment, we might have people that work third shift or second shift or the weekends. So what that consistent meal pattern looks like might be different for each of us. So another tool that we can use to kind of figure out when should I be adding snacks in if we don't have a real traditional work schedule or eating schedule is the hunger scale. Has anybody seen this before? No? Okay. okay. Well, the hunger scale is a tool that we can use to gauge our hunger throughout the day. And as you can see, um, it goes from one, which is basically you're so hungry you'll eat anything, right? You're starving, you're famished, you're about ready to chew your arm off because you need to eat <laughs> soon. Um, and that slowly progresses through to number 10 where you're painfully full. And think of like Thanksgiving Day where you've had all the treats, right? All the, <laughs> all the special things that you've been waiting for all year. And you've eaten so much that you just al almost feel like you're going to be sick. So the goal would be to never end up at a number one or a number 10. Our goal would be to try to stay within the range of the four to seven. And in this range, um, you're generally comfortable. You have key decisions to make at about the four level. When you're starting to get hungry, you're starting to think about food, your stomach's going, hey, I think I'm ready. You're not quite like your stomach's growling, but you're, you're getting there. And then the seven is, you know, we've eaten enough that we're comfortable, fairly satisfied, but not stuffed. So our goal would be to try to stay within that range. Um, when you wait to eat, you know, past the level three, three or lower, um, you really have a lot more chance of either eating too much or making poor choices because you're hungry and you can't wait long enough to take the time to cook and, or put together something that might be a healthier choice. And then if you eat beyond level seven, you're typically going to feel pretty bad right, because you've either eaten something really crummy that makes you feel terrible or you've just eaten so much that you're bloated and full. So this is a nice tool that's, um, if that's something that you've never kind of thought of before, this can really help you move towards a more mindful way of eating, paying attention to your cues, and more, some people describe it as intuitive eating, um, where you're listening to your body and kind of thinking about where I need to add those snacks in in my day. Because, of course, again, we're all kind of following a different schedule. So the third thing a healthy snack can do is help with our portion control at our meals. So when we eat consistently throughout the day and don't go those long periods of time without food, um, it prevents that excess hunger like we were talking about. Um, and it allows us to eat more slowly at a meal. Um, you know, when we go long periods of time without eating, what do we do as soon as we sit down to our plate? Like we're famished, right? And we get in as fast as we can. And you look up five, eight, ten minutes later and your whole plate of food is gone. Does anybody have that trouble at all? Yeah. And so when we do that, you know, we don't give our body the time it needs to tell us, hey, I'm okay, I've had enough, right? Because by the time we get to 20 minutes, we've already eaten too much food. In a lot of cases, we've eaten a whole plate and maybe gone back for a second plate because we still don't feel full yet. So if we keep our hunger controlled throughout the day and walk into our meals not starving, then it allows us to slow down, take our time, um, perhaps focus on other things like talking to people, you know, having a conversation, um, enjoying what we're eating versus inhaling it. Um, and that, in turn, allows us to consume smaller amounts before our body says, okay, I'm comfortable now. So that's another benefit that snacks can have. Um, some other reasons or some other benefits for eating slowly is that it actually allows you to enjoy what you're eating, right? <laughs> um, so, 
you know, you can enjoy the smells of it, the tastes of it, really be mindful of, you know, that one and the third one go together, mindful of what you're choosing and really enjoy the food and that naturally will allow you to eat less. Um, it also can help improve your digestion. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who suffer from issues with reflux or bloating or discomfort and eating more slowly and you know allowing your body to digest the food properly can help resolve some of those symptoms too and then in the end it can also save you some money um, you know on a weekly basis it's probably not going to look like a lot but over time if you slow down and you eat less each week you may be saving five ten fifteen dollars on your grocery bill because you're not consuming as much food but over the course of a year that could really add up so those are just some other benefits to that and then um, as far as number four, the healthy snack can also increase our energy or keep it more consistent throughout the day um, and decrease some of those cravings that we might have at that two o'clock slump, you know, when we're, <laughs> we're all like just trying to make it through the afternoon and, you know, we're pretty vulnerable to the idea of going to get um, something from the vending machine. So, you know, how this works is each time we eat, um, our blood sugar goes up a little bit, right? Because we've consumed something and that's our body's natural response. And then as we move about and eat and drink and talk and walk and do all those things, we burn through that. And if we go really long periods of time between snacking and eating, then we can kind of run a little bit low. And then again, our energy level runs low. So if we focus on balanced snacks throughout the day, that's going to help us keep that energy level more consistent, which in turn is going to keep us from craving as many of those maybe less desirable snacks. Okay, so what are we eating now for snacks? These, are, these tiles represent the top categories of snack choices. Uh, as of 2014 and you can see there's a few things on there that aren't too bad right um, but then there's also a lot of those choices that were those common ones we were talking about the low nutrient value ones like the chips and the sodas and the ice creams and cakes and candies that probably aren't adding a lot to our diet the good news is some of, some of those choices the yogurts milks fruit nut and seeds those foods are considered nutrient dense. So we're making some good choices. That's good. Yay for us. <laughs> um, so there's a few things that we're already doing really well. Um, and when we talk about nutrient density, what we're talking about is foods that add value to our diet, basically. Um, so foods that provide vitamins, minerals, other substances that enhance our health, um, ideally in a form a more natural state, you know, whole food that still includes uh, fiber or other nutrients that help us use those vitamins and minerals um, and that are limited in added fats, sugar, salt. Um, so foods that qualify or can qualify as nutrient dense, really we have a lot of options here, okay? Um, vegetables and fruits are kind of the obvious ones. I think most people would pick those things out. Um, but whole grains, eggs, beans and peas, nuts and seeds, dairy products, and lean meats, if those things are all prepared in the right way, can all qualify as a nutrient-dense food. So you can see our options of things that we can add into our snacks. Really, there's a lot to choose from here. So we need to just keep broadening our, our horizon, right, and our perspective and thinking anything really could be a healthful snack food. So we're already eating the yogurt, milk, the fruit, nuts, and seeds. So what we can start to add in or look at adding in would be the vegetables, the whole grains, the meats, eggs, beans, if you can tolerate them. That's good. Okay. So... Um, now that we've kind of talked about, you know, what the snacking looks like, what we kind of have been doing, and some of the reasons it might be good to add those things into our diet, the question is, how do we do that? How many people in here meal prep now? 
Oh, wow. Yay. Good job, everybody. <laughs> that's a pretty good amount. I mean, maybe not quite 50-50, but that, that's a lot. So, you know, meal planning and meal preparation is a great tool. You know, we, um, many people spend their days kind of running through their day. Um, you know, that earlier pattern that we saw about, you know, just get up, grab and go and grab here and there. That day is kind of chaotic, right? It's kind of stressful. We may be just kind of depending on, on the whims of what we can find to know whether we're going to have a healthy choice or not. But when we start to meal plan, that's when we can really take control of our options. Um, it sounds daunting, I think, to some people. Um, you know, when you already have a busy schedule or you're stressed, the thought of adding in one more task or chore can be kind of overwhelming. Um, but I think most people find that once they start to use meal planning, initially it might be a little bit more time consuming to kind of figure things out. But once you get past that initial hump, it actually tends to make things a little bit easier and can save you time in the long run if um, you get into a pattern of doing that. And then it allows you to have the control over what are your choices every day that you can take with you. So when we're planning snacks, oops, sorry, <laughs> some things to think about um, is that we do want it to be a snack. It's not a meal. So uh, we're looking at portion sizes. And um, aiming for around 200 calories is a generally kind of a good rule of thumb. Um, everybody's schedule is a little bit different. So if you are someone that is going to have light meals throughout your day, then you might need a heartier snack. Or if you're someone that's really active and doing a lot of heavy working out and exercising, you might need to bump those calories up just a little bit in between. Or if you have um, shorter periods between your meals and you just need something light, then maybe you know a little bit less calories, like 100 to 150. Um, so that's one thing is to focus on the size of it. And then secondly, focus on making substitutions in our diet for healthy foods instead of still eating the other bad stuff and then just adding the healthy foods on top of it. Okay, so what should snacks include? Um, a good rule of thumb is to think about including the rule of three, which is to combine carbohydrates, fats, and protein at a snack. Um, this combination will help keep you feeling full, takes your body a little bit longer to process and digest those things, and um, will help keep your energy level balanced between meals as you go throughout your day. Um, another tip would to be fo to focus on improving your nutrition would to try to increase the color of foods that you're eating. Has anybody heard that before, snack on the rainbow? That's kind of a term that's been out there a little bit. But this is an opportunity to really add some things to your diet. Um, if you are, you know, maybe a decent fruit eater, but all you ever eat is bananas or apples, then maybe, you know, look at trying to pick a different color that you can expand into um, maybe some blueberries or blackberries or other foods that can add different nutrients into your diet. Um, if you're not a big green eater, big salad eater, you can look at some other options like edamame or some broccoli to snack on to get some of those darker green colors into your diet. Okay, so as far as meal planning or snack planning, um, some things to think about when you're getting started um, is to look at this as a task. You know, just like, because I'm sure a lot of you in here have parts of your job or things that you do where you have to think about planning, right? Um, you know, how am I going to get through my day? What do I need to get done during this shift? Um, you know, what's my project that I'm working on for a week down the road or a month down the road? Um, I recommend to people that they look at meal planning in kind of the same way. Like, what are my goals? What do I want to accomplish with this? And what obstacles, you know, what, what are my challenges going to be? What obstacles am I going to face? And what are the supports that I can put in place to kind of work around those? So when you're talking about snacks, you know, the first thing I recommend is come up with some options, right? Come up with a list of choices, things that you enjoy, 
because that's going to be a little bit different for each of us, that um, are, you know, really family friendly. If you have a family, you can have everybody come together and work on the list of snacks. So it's something that um, everyone's kind of willing to pitch in and help with, right? Um, in the household, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes if you're the only one that's going, hey, let's eat healthy snacks, right? <laughs> but if you can um, rope the other people in to giving suggestions, then they're a whole lot more likely to actually help with that process. So the full burden of all of the snack prep isn't on you. Um, so you can search on the internet. There's lots and lots and lots of recipes out there. Um, you know, I say ask your friends, ask your coworkers, what are they doing? What kind of snacks do they like? Um, what snacks make them feel good and keep their energy up? You know, there's new products out on the market every day. So you can't, no one person could possibly keep up on every new bar or drink or this or that that's out. So use your community and try to find good options that way. Ask your family members. So come up with that list. That's kind of the first step. So you have, you know what your options are. And then look at your calendar for the week. This is kind of a main thing with meal planning is look at your week and think, you know, when am I going to have time? When am I going to have time to prepare the, the snacks? When am I going to have time to buy the snacks? Um, which days are going to be my busier ones? Am I going to have time to pack or not pack? Um, you know, do I need to keep some things at work and keep a stash there? So kind of looking through your calendar and seeing like when you're going to be able to do things. And then when you pick the recipes that you're going to make for that week before you go shopping, another tip is try to group ones together where your ingredients might overlap. So you can make multiple things out of the same types of ingredients. Um, then choose your shopping day and make a list. Um, but plan it well. Don't plan it on a day where you have like 25 other things you have to accomplish, right? <laughs> because chances are you're not going to get, you're going to forget your list or you're not going to be able to have the whole time at the store or when you get home you're not going to have time to prep your foods. So kind of strategize and figure out a day of the week that's a better day for you. And some of us that might be a Saturday and others it might be a Tuesday. Um, and then if you're able to, as much as possible, prep your foods as soon as you get home. Okay. How many people have cauliflower that sits in the head of cauliflower that sits in the refrigerator for like two weeks, three <laughs> before they finally just throw it out, right? <laughs> so, you know, and I'm guilty, guilty. <laughs> because it takes time, right? It takes time to process all those fruits and vegetables. So if you can plan it so that as soon as you get home, you just get everything unpacked, you're still working, you're still in the groove, you still have motivation to just go ahead and get everything washed and cut up. Now, if you're the kind of person that just isn't going to do that, then maybe think about what's the value of buying those types of foods already washed and cut, you know? Because they do tend to be a little more expensive, but less expensive than throwing away the head of cauliflower or broccoli every week, right? So that might be another thing to think about is, especially if it's just particular foods, you know, if you're really good at processing other things, but just not this, you know, then maybe buy the cauliflower already cut and washed so you're good to go. Um, and then use measuring cups and potentially like snack size containers when you're preparing your snacks, because this will help us stick with the portion control that we were just talking about so that the, meal, the snack doesn't get out of hand as far as calories and become more like a meal. Um, some other tips is keep a well-stocked pantry, okay? Because we know if we don't have it on hand, chances are we're going to just run out the door, right? And then we're back at the mercy of trying to find something out at fast food or at restaurants that might be a good choice for us. Um, particularly items that you use often, you might consider buying in bulk. Um, so if you really like nuts or, you know, you make your own trail mix and you have a few different ingredients that you can work into there, those might be things that you'd want to buy in bulk and then get some nice containers so that you're used, you can keep them airtight and keep them fresh for a while. Um, organize your refrigerator. 
Um, try as best you can. I know, like, certainly if you're not the only one there, other people tend to move things around. But if you have the space to kind of structure it so that the foods that you're going to be eating towards the beginning of your week are towards the front, and then you can kind of work your way back, um, it makes it a little quicker and easier in the morning when you're trying to get out the door with these things. Um, pack once and maybe just pack for the week instead of trying to go through every morning, trying to find the time to pack up different snacks and figure out what I like and what I don't like, go ahead and just pack once and then you're set for the week and you can just grab as you go. Um, use your fresh produce earlier in the week. Um, save canned stuff or frozen for later. Um, be strategic about freezing. So if you have a bar that you like to make or those little energy bites or some other recipe and you really only have time to make it, like every so often, then make a huge batch and freeze them so that you'll have them throughout the week or throughout the month. Um, think about what time of day you struggle most with healthy eating, okay? For most of us, there is a time that gets to be more challenging in our schedule. Um, and so pick snacks that will fit well, you know? If you have a, a rushed period of time where you really only have five minutes to eat, don't plan, you know, your snack to be something that's really hard to chew or really takes a long time to eat. Maybe that would be a good time to have just something quick and easy you could pop in or potentially a drink of some sort that helps fill that need. Um, don't travel without snack options. I mean, the, the little um, convenience stores and the um, gas stations are getting better. I mean, they are having some options that are, are you can usually find a cheese stick or some fruit or something. But if you take your snacks with you, then you're in control of what you're consuming. Um, and then invest in the equipment you need to, to be able to take those things with you. OK, so snack ideas. Um, and this is, again, going back to that idea of combining. So when we talk about these foods, what we're trying to look at at each one is that it has like a form of carbohydrate in it, a little bit of protein and a little bit of fat. So some, and I'm a big believer that you don't have to eat breakfast foods at breakfast time and you don't have to eat dinner foods at dinner time. I think you can kind of eat whatever, whenever to fit what works for you. Um, but I kind of, I kind of themed these along with more traditional like breakfasty or afternoon type choices. So some ideas that could be tried would be like a whole grain English muffin with a little bit of peanut butter and some fruit, like maybe some strawberries or berries on top of that if you like that. Um, apple and string cheese, um, some, a serving of fruit with like a nut butter, like an almond butter or peanut butter or nuts. Um, trail mix, you have to be a little careful. A lot of the ones that are out there available to buy are pretty high in sugar. So you might want to just come up with a recipe of your own that you could make. Um, those little egg muffins, I don't know if anybody's tried to make those yet. Those are super easy. You just use like a muffin tin and you basically have scrambled eggs and whatever veggies or other things you want to throw in. They're pretty portable once they're made. So those could be something you could just throw in your ice pack and take with you for the day. Um, applesauce topped with a little bit of nuts and cinnamon to get that protein and the fat in there. Um, hard boiled eggs. Very great, easy, portable snack with a little bit of fruit. Um, avocado, start getting some of those heart-healthy fats in there um, on the sprouted toast. Um, some low-fat cottage cheese and pineapple or some yogurt with some berries and um, black seed. Um, these are some ideas for the afternoon that might give you that little perk up in the middle of the day. Um, edamame is a, a good, easy, quick snack. Um, kind of has it all packed into one. Um, turkey and bell peppers with some hummus spread, some fruit and cheese. Um, if you like something a little more savory instead of a sweet snack, you could try uh, like roasted chickpeas with whatever kind of spice combination that you enjoy. Um, or even making the little whole wheat pitas with um, different toppings, whatever you like. You could do something with the hummus, cucumber, tomato, or you could do like obviously this is something you'd want to make ahead, but you know, maybe one evening a week, just grill up some um, little pitas with the black beans and cheese and salsa and have that as a little quick snack in the middle of the day. 
and then some other evening ones. This is another savory one that might be a good choice is you can make your own popcorn and then put whatever combination of toppings you enjoy on there. Um, you could get something a little spicy, like a chili powder that might give you a little kick, um, <laughs> or something a little more um, like a Parmesan or some garlic, some turmeric on there to get a little boost, um, some veggies and low-fat Greek dip, um, yogurt with cherries, some walnuts, clementine, um, almonds and a banana, cucumber and tomato salad. Okay, so these are all just generally quick and easy little combinations. Some of these things you could make up in a batch, like the cucumber and tomato salad, and then portion it out so you have that in the evenings available. Um, that one would require a little more work to get started, but if you didn't have time, something quick and easy, like one slice of a whole grain bread with a little bit of peanut butter would be an easy way to do that. And if you like it a little sweeter, you could also put a little bit of fruit on there too as some options. Um, so you can see it can kind of be just about anything as far as a snack choice goes. Um, so get creative, you know, find the lists, um, find these ways to work healthier foods in there. Um, are these things in general, how many people would eat any of these kinds of things? Yeah, so most of the crowd, right? Um, and these are all healthful, nutrient-dense choices, and we've moved away from, like, the snacky foods. And these are going to help us feel better throughout our day. So, okay. So that is what I had. Any questions? Any questions? Oh, no questions. Okay. okay. Going once. Mm. Ah, here we go. She's up here. Yeah. Mm. Hi, for the yogurt, um, a lot of them have so much sugar. They do. And so I yes. try to just more or less stay away because mm -hmm. they say if they have added fruit, it's high in sugar. Um, but you're saying yogurt is a good choice? It can be. It can be. You know, you definitely have to read the labels because there are a lot of yogurts out there that have added sugars. Um, and, you know, if some have just added fruit, which, you know, fruit in and of itself is going to have a little bit of a natural sugar in it. Um, but some will have that plus other added sugars. So, you know, the nutrition labels as you, they're, we're moving toward them having to all have the added sugar labeled individually, but they're not all there yet. So if you can't tell from the label itself, you would just need to look at the ingredient listing. Um, and see what's in there, whether it's just strawberries or whether it's corn syrup or something like that. Um, the other option would be to just get a plain yogurt. Um, you said Greek? Yeah. Well, the Greek ones are higher in protein. Um, it is kind of an acquired taste. I don't know if you've ever had it, but yeah. it's a little bit different. It's more of a sour taste than a sweet taste. Um, all yogurt will have some protein in it. The Greek ones are pretty high. They're more like usually like 15 to 20 grams per one of those bigger cups. Um, so it's certainly a good option if you don't mind the taste of it. And then you could use your own fruit um, or whatever toppings you would enjoy to kind of sweeten it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And then also along that line, um, you had milk, mm -hmm. which um, I've met with a registered dietitian and they've gone more towards almond milk. Mm -hmm. What's your take on almond milk? I think almond milk is fine. Um, they both can be a healthy part of a diet. Um, you know, if there's certainly if there's a reason you would need to avoid cow's milk, um, like if you were lactose intolerant, or yeah. you know, then almond milk is a fine substitute. It does not have a lot of protein in it. Um, so you know, if you were looking at it as a protein source, um, you know, cow's milk it's kind of a whole food in that way that it will have some carbohydrates and protein and a little bit of fat if you don't get the skim. Um, whereas the almond milk doesn't have a lot of that. Soy milk does; it's better, uh, but that's kind of a different taste. Um, <laughs> if you're not accustomed to soy, that's that's a little different. The almond milk tastes a lot more like regular cow's milk. Um, it's fine to use, certainly. It's just um, so much low in sugar then. Well, milk is why I'm if you get the unflavored almond milk, yes, yes. Um, you have to watch that too. Yeah, um, I, I get the unflavored. Yeah, um, but the sugar that's in regular cow's milk is lactose. It's a naturally occurring sugar. So unless you're buying something like chocolate milk, it's not an added sugar. Um, and, you know, I, I think 
you would just have to think about like how much are you consuming? Is that really adding a lot to your diet? Is it adding a lot of calories? Um, you know, like that. So. Okay. Yeah. Question over here. Hi, I'm curious what your thoughts are about um, artificial sweeteners. Um, you know, there's always a new yogurt on the shelf. Speaking of yogurt, there are um, yes. fat-free and sugar-free and artificial sugar and correct. They yes. are for, to me, they're not very satisfying. But right, I'm and that's a big that's a big factor right there. Certainly, that could be a big decision maker for me if I'm choosing something and I'm not feeling fulfilled from it. Then it's probably not really worth my time. Um, as far as artificial sweeteners go, that's kind of an individual decision. Um, there, you know, this is a hot, hot area where every other day we get a new study that it, it causes cancer, it doesn't cause cancer, it does this, it doesn't do that. Um, and at this point, overwhelmingly, they're still recognized as safe. So it is, you know, an option that's out there. And then I think from there, people just have to make an individual decision as far as whether they want to be able to consume, want to consume those foods or not. Um, you know, there are more and more options, especially with yogurt, that's kind of an exploding area right now, <laughs> where there are things that are what they're calling like minimally sweetened, where they're still using like a natural sugar, or not natural sugar, but like a taste, sugar, using real sugar, not the artificial sweeteners, but they're just using much, much smaller amounts. So maybe something in the middle of the road like that um, might be more fulfilling. I don't usually rec recommend people go all the way to fat-free because that tends to not be filling. Um, and again, that's an instance of how much of it are you using. You know, if you're talking about a yogurt or a glass of milk and, you know, you're looking at the full-fat version versus a low-fat version, my question is how much do you eat it? How often do you eat it? How much are you consuming? And does it fit within your plan? Because if you have one cup of whole milk a week, that's really not interfering with a whole lot. You know, it's not adding extra, tons of extra calories into your diet. But if you consume three glasses every day, then maybe bumping it down to 2% might be a good choice. And still be able to feel satisfied with that, but not add quite as many calories in. So. Oh, right here. I really like granola with my yogurt, so I can't find a low sugar or no sugar granola. Any suggestions on making it at home or a brand that's low sugar? Um, well, you know, brands are hard because, again, they're like every day they're different and there's more out there. Um, I Certainly you could get your own um, oats and toast those oats, you know, and, and find a recipe to do to make like a batch at home. Um, and then add in whichever, you know, if you like a little bit of dried fruit added in or something, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of sugar if there's a fruit content in there. But again, you know, you have to balance out how much of that you're using. Um, and sometimes you can offset it with maybe like a whole grain cereal and some oats and a little bit of dried fruit, just enough to give it a sweetness. Um, but you're definitely going to have more control over that if you're making it yourself. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, everyone, thank for coming thank today. You. If you guys could take the, uh, the two, three minutes to fill out the evaluation, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, we use those to, uh, to schedule Lunch and Learns in the future. And then our next Lunch and Learn will be April 19th on stress management uh, strategies. So see you then. We had one guy, uh,